The nine freedoms of the air. Together they form the framework for bilateral and multilateral agreements on the use of international airspace. What are the nine freedoms of the air and what do they mean? Let's talk aviation. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like and subscribe. This really helps the channel grow and makes it easier for others to find. Almost right after the Second World War, commercial aviation grew rapidly as an industry. Spurred by the enormous number of new airstrips, the world was more connected than ever. However, this raised one question. Who owned which airspace and which airlines were allowed to fly through? During the Chicago Convention of 1944, a framework was constructed. The freedoms of the air. The first freedom is the right to fly over the territory of another country. To do so, the airline must notify in advance, get approval and possibly pay an overflight fee. So as an example, a Mexican airline flying from Mexico City to Toronto can fly over the US as long as they get clearance in advance. The second freedom is the right to make a technical stop in the country. This can be a refuel or because of an emergency. The right does not allow for passengers and cargo to get on or off the plane. So going back to our example of the Mexican airline flying from Mexico City to Toronto, this right will allow the airline to refuel at any airport in the US. This second freedom was useful especially in the early days of aviation, when the range of aircraft was limited. Long haul flights usually included one or more refueling stops, and the second freedom ensured that airlines were allowed to do so. Together, the first and second freedom are combined in the International Air Transport Agreement. All countries that ratify this agreement will grant the first and second freedom to all airlines from the other ratifying countries. Currently, 134 countries have ratified the agreement, but some larger ones like China, Canada, Russia and Indonesia haven't. This means that to get the overflight rights, countries will have to make bilateral agreements. Going on with the third and fourth freedom of the air. These grant an airline the right to operate a direct flight to and from its home country. For a British airline operating a flight from London to Paris, the third freedom will ensure that the airline can carry passengers from London to Paris and the fourth one allows it to carry passengers back from Paris to London. With the fifth freedom, it gets a little bit more complicated. This one is about multi-leg flights and allows an airline to transport passengers or cargo between two foreign countries as long as the leg is part of a longer flight originating or ending at the country of origin for the airline. So let's go back to our first example of the Mexican airline flying from Mexico to Toronto. And now we'll add a stop in Dallas. The fifth freedom ensures that passengers can get on the flight in Dallas and fly to Toronto or the other way around. Passengers can board the flight in Toronto and get off in Dallas without ever the slightest intention to go to Mexico City. The last three freedoms have been referred to as the transport rights, as they ensure airlines can transport passengers or cargo between foreign countries. They too have been combined in a treaty, but there have only been 11 countries that have ratified them, being Bolivia, Burundi, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Ethiopia, Greece, Honduras, Liberia, the Netherlands, Paraguay and Turkey. For flights between any other country, bilateral agreements are necessary. These five freedoms are the only ones officially recognized by international treaties. There are four more unofficial ones that help build the framework for bilateral and multilateral agreements on airspace usage. The sixth freedom allows an airline to operate a flight between two foreign countries, as long as there is a stop in its home country. For example, a flight by an Australian airline from Indonesia to New Zealand with a stop in Australia. The seventh freedom grants an airline the right to operate a flight between two foreign countries. So for example, a German airline operating a flight from France to Spain. The eighth freedom allows an airline to operate a domestic leg in a foreign country as long as the flight, of which the leg is a part, originates or ends the home country of the airline. As an example, a Mexican airline operating a flight from Mexico City to Dallas with a stop in Houston. The final and ninth freedom grants an airline to operate a domestic flight in a foreign country, even if it's not part of a longer flight operating or starting at its home country. So the previous freedom, the lag from Mexico City to Houston was necessary, but with the ninth freedom, the Mexican airline can now operate a flight from Houston to Dallas without the need to come from or go to Mexico City. There you have them, all nine freedoms of the air that together form the framework for multilateral agreements. Did you know about the nine freedoms of the air? and how they make it easy for airlines to operate international flights. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching and please consider subscribing 
to less okay aviation.